Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Matt here. I'm in my room that uh, we're staying in Umbria for the World Championship match. We just arrived last night and today I'm finally unpacking all my match gear for the first time since arriving in Italy to uh, check everything over, make sure there's no damage from the trip, uh, you know, the transportation and whatnot, and to zero the rifle today. It's Monday, so it's the first day of the actual official event, which is seven days long. We have three days of training, bonus stages and practice and then we have four days of the actual competition with an ending ceremony on sunday so again uh, i haven't even really opened these up uh, to inspect anything carefully we're just going to zero out the rifles um, i got my range pass which is pretty sweet you can see that there and i also got a matchbook printed for the 18 stages that we'll be shooting for the world championships. Uh, the stages look pretty good. Uh, I'll say there's a lot of movement and the target sizes are definitely on the smaller size. I believe the average uh, target size is a 0.6 mil, which is quite small, but all the targets are within 220 yards. So it's a different style match that they're hosting here in Europe. I mean, what we shoot in Canada, oftentimes we're pushing beyond 250 yards. So this is closer targets but smaller. So fundamentals is going to be key as usual. And I'm really excited. I had a lot of requests to show what I'm bringing to the world championship. I had intentions to film this back in Canada before I left, but uh, we were super busy. So I'm going to do it here. I'm going to unpack everything and show you what I brought to the world championship match. Also, if you notice the lighting like flickering, it's actually because the lights in here sort of flicker a little bit. Uh, that's just because this room, whoa, <laughs> that's just because this room has a little bit of character to it. So anyway, I apologize if uh, you notice the lights going up and down. Anyway, we're gonna start with the rifle case. The way I packed for the World Championships here was very similar to what I did for the Nationals match in Texas. I have my main uh, rifle case, obviously, with the rifle and mags and stuff. And then I have another bag here, which uh, is a checked luggage that has all the remaining uh, remaining match equipment like my bags and the ammo and whatnot and this case is actually slightly shorter than the one I used um, or the one I've been using for the past two seasons which is the Volt V800 this one here is the Volt V730 so it's I can't remember exactly like eight inches shorter and I wanted to have the smallest possible rifle case coming to Europe because we weren't sure what type of car we were going to rent and folding seats down in a tiny little compact car might not be Ideal. So I tried to go for a smaller case. Just makes things a little bit easier. So the rifle I brought, since I'm shooting open division, of course, is my custom uh, Voodoo Gunworks 360, barreled up and chambered by Desert Precision Gunworks. I have it here in the MDT ACC Elite chassis, and uh, you'll notice that it's not obviously the KRG C4, which I've been running for the majority of the season. The biggest reason why I went with the ACC Elite is because. It's a lighter chassis, especially in the buttstock, than the KRG, so I can get the overall rifle balanced uh, a couple pounds lighter than if it was in the KRG. And this entire rifle case is about 48 pounds, and the limit, uh, if you don't want to pay overweight fees, is 50 pounds. So if it was in the KRG, it would be over 50 pounds. So I went with the ACC Elite. Optic, obviously, is what I've been running all season, the uh, Gen 3 Razor from Vortex. And the way I cut out this foam, I have my sunshade here. I don't generally like to run the sunshade unless I need to, so it has its own compartment. My bolt, which I travel uh, with the bolt removed from the firearm, so it's really easy to make sure it's clear for anyone who might be inspecting it. And I also do decock it just to take out the spring tension and to recock it before putting it in the rifle. I have one of these tools uh, in the case. Magazines here, I brought four. 10 rounders just in here. You'll notice I do have a cutout in the foam because when I go back home and I'm running extensions, I'll take out this little block so this fits my 15 round mags. Um, but since you're only allowed 10 rounders here, I just put in this little spacer. So I have four magazines. I got my dope card holders. I took the send it level off my mount, um, although it can fit in the case with the send it level all attached but um, I just wanted to be a little bit more careful for traveling so I took the center level off there uh, this is for the magneto speed and then I have a very basic cleaning kit just in case a little toothbrush um, 
a boar snake, which I have cut off the brush section, so it's basically just a patch. <laughs> uh, a little bit of cotton swabs, patches, oil, um, just very basic stuff. So that goes in there. In this compartment here, I have my bipod of choice for competition, which is the MDT Skypod. Got my chamber flags. Uh, this is a DIY magneto speed mount, so I can uh, have my magneto speed on the rifle, but not touching the barrel. And I have a spare parts kit for my Voodoo, which just has like spare firing pin, extractors, and other little parts, just in case I need to do any sort of maintenance on the gun, which hopefully I won't need. And then the last two sections here are also for the magneto speed. I got the little computer and then the bayonet, uh, the Magneto Speed bayonet itself in this slot here. So it looks like everything made it okay. Um, you know, the turrets turn and I know the airport people can be quite rough with uh, <laughs> your baggage. So it's always good to check it over. Again, this is the Monday, uh, the first day of the events and we're gonna go ahead and zero up as soon as the rain lets up outside. So that is the rifle case. And now I can show you what else I have in the luggage here. We somehow managed to get this thing below 50 pounds as well. I think when we weighed it, it was like 47 and a half. So we didn't have to pay overweight fee on this one either, which is great. But it's funny because my heavy fill medium, it's like 12 pounds. So it's, it's more than 20% of the weight of this entire bag. But can show you here how we have this packed. I did have my, uh, I didn't decide to bring my pump pillow just cause it doesn't really weigh much and you can compress it down pretty good. I do like to have it on certain stages. So I decided to bring it. Uh, my tripod fits in lengthwise, which is awesome. You'll, uh, if you follow the channel, you may have remembered that I was running a Leo photo two section tripod for the last season, but I ended up selling that early on when I, uh, when I found out I was going to the world championships and I bought a four section tripod specifically so it can be more compact and fit on my luggage. Because when I went to Texas, the, the way I got my two section Leo photo down was uh, my buddy who actually drove from Canada to Texas brought it down for me. There was no way I could bring that on the plane. So I had to get a smaller tripod <laughs> for this match. And I've been running this like cheap Amazon NRL a carbon tripod for the entire season. And honestly, I actually really like it. So it wasn't a downgrade. It was just, I had to get something that could fold down smaller. So that's right there. I just have sort of like a cheap ball head on that because I don't shoot off the top. It's just for spotting. All right, so you can see the ammo box here. I put it in a Pelican case, so it's a hard case. And the, uh, the nice inspection people did put their sticker on it. I brought oh, another document. I brought 400 rounds of Ely Match. I did switch to Ely Match partway through the season. And since I've been shooting that for the past couple matches, I decided to stick with it. The maximum amount of rounds you were technically allowed to bring into the country, into Italy, was 200 rounds. But Doi registered as uh, press or media, so she could bring 200 with her invite, and I brought 200 for myself. So I have enough, hopefully, to zero up and do some training, and then it's approximately 200 rounds for the match, which is over uh, four days. But you only shoot two of the days. So that's the ammo. In my dump pouch, I just have my mag carriers from Short Action Precision. I have two of those and my dump pouch. I have the footwear that I like to use when shooting my matches, just a pair of hikers. And underneath my match bag, I actually ended up bringing my tripod office. So this attaches onto my tripod and gives me a good little area to do my stage prep. And it looks like my clipboard cracked, which is totally fine, <laughs> but uh, small damage there. And then I have a pouch with my some admin stuff like pens, my dope cards and spare set of ear pro. I wasn't sure if I was gonna bring this originally, but since it lays flat underneath everything, it was pretty easy to fit. And lastly, what I have in here is my range bag with everything else in it. So I'll just pull this out. Um, I do have some spare stuff. I actually brought a spare uh, unfilled empty game changer, medium size. 
This was just in case they cut open my main one, which I've heard of them doing before for inspection. The inspector won't know that there's a uh, opening, a Velcro opening, so they'll just cut it open with a knife to swab the material inside. And if that were to happen, I wanted a backup so I could just fill it with sand um, and have a bag for the match. But luckily, it looks like my Schmedium made it okay without anyone having to cut it open. So inside my match bag, this really didn't change at all from what I carry with me for every other match. I basically just threw my match bag into the luggage, but I have my binoculars. These are the Apex Summit Pros 12 by 50s with the reticle inside. I have my Really Right Stuff cinch mount, which attaches onto the Arca Rail dovetail right on top of my tripod. And it looks like everything is working. Nothing's damaged, nothing's cracked. So that's good. I have a little pouch here with all my spare batteries and a few spare admin stuff. I take the batteries out of all my electronics, including my Kestrel and my rangefinder, to put them in a hard case just in case. When I arrive on location, I'll pop the batteries back in so obviously I can use them. So that's, uh, that's this little pouch here. On top here will be my Kestrel, some Kleenex, so my 5700 Elite with applied ballistics. I, I switched from Strelock to that, so it's been working pretty good. That, those are the two front small pockets on the inside here. I usually use this for snacks, so it's empty, but I have my rangefinder in it currently. Again, these two things don't have batteries in them right now, but I'll put them in soon enough. And then in, my, in the top main compartment are just my shooting bags. So I have, again, my heavy fill Schmedium, which weighs about 11 and a half to 12 pounds. So this thing was 20% of the weight of that entire luggage, which is kind of funny. Um, and luckily they didn't have to cut it. So it's in one piece. I know someone who had, uh, who brought a wee bad fortune cookie and the fortune cookie doesn't even have a Velcro closure. So the TSA people actually cut it open to swab the inside and made him dump out the fill. So it's something you have to think about. How did you explain what that was in the scanner? Oh yeah, so it's kind of funny. Um, they sent us to Oversize to put this thing through the x-ray and the guy saw this on the x-ray machine and he asked me what it was because it just looked like a big dense material. And I said it's a shooting bag. I wasn't quite sure how to explain what a shooting bag is. So I just pulled up my phone and I showed him a picture of uh, the last match of me using this on a barricade. And, you know, I said, just it's, it's for the rifle for support. And he's like, oh, that's pretty cool. And he let me through without even opening the, the case. But not everyone is as lucky as that. So that's why I have the spare empty medium in case I had to fill it with some domestic Italian sand. <laughs> my other support bag I brought is my flat plate. It's a gray ops plate with the flat bag on the bottom there. I usually only use this if I'm using tripod rear support, which often is not the case these days. Um, but we'll see for this match, a little bit different style. Maybe I'll deploy the tripod for some stages. And the last thing in here is a sling. I brought a sling because I wasn't sure if there's gonna be any unsupported offhand stages, which uh, looking at the course of fire, it doesn't look like there is. So that's good for me because I suck at offhand, but I brought a sling just in case because I wasn't quite sure if that was gonna be included in this course of fire. And then lastly is the side, the side pockets for the, um, the bag. This one is my toolkit. So I have a Leatherman and my uh, Fix-It sticks. So I have an extra trigger in there just in case, an extra um, trigger tech. I got all the bits I need and then my torque wrench. And then on the other side, I have an empty Pelican case, the 1040. And this fits six boxes of ammo perfectly. And this is what I usually use to have ammo uh, in my match bag. So I'll just transfer it from this bigger Pelican case into here and then put that in my bag for the match. And that's basically it. Quite a bit of stuff that we managed to bring. Uh, just shy of 100 pounds of match equipment. So going through the airport, you know, lugging a big heavy rifle case and all your match stuff can be quite a chore, but it, it all got here and it looks like the only thing that was damaged uh, was my clipboard, <laughs> my $3 clipboard, which uh, got cracked. But 
Again, we're gonna zero up the rifle here. I'm gonna do a tracking test because we learned from experience another Canadian shooter when he got to nationals in Texas, his scope only tracked up to about five mils and then the erector got stuck. So he didn't even notice his, his tracking was off until he came back to Canada and did some tracking tests on a scope. So I'm definitely gonna do some tracking tests on the Razor Gen 3, make sure it's tracking good and zero up the rifle and get the, uh, the match started for this week.